The final score, Wrexham 2, Crawley Town 1, and Phil Parkinson hit the nail on the head after the match when he said that we hadn't reached the levels either with or without the ball that we'd reached in our previous three home games. Well, we certainly didn't. Credit to Crawley for that. They're a good team, a side I've always respected after Scott Lindsay took over. He's a miracle worker and an exceptional coach. And his well-organised things gave us problems, to be honest. But... We dug deep and we found solutions to the problem, something that we're very good at doing. So back in winning ways, and that's the most important thing from that. But they did, like I say, cause us issues and had two chances from the start. Firstly, a long ball, which O'Connell missed, meant that the ball carried through to Swan. Swan was driving at Clueth. Clueth did ever so well to stay on his feet and stop him from having a chance to drive at him and as a result Swan had to hit it from the edge of the box and put the ball wide but then like I said two minutes later it was Swan once more this time an uncharacteristically bad ball by George Dobson trying to pass the ball across square in his own half picked out Swan Swan drove forwards and it was a weak shot in all honesty to the relief of the Wrexham midfielder and Wrexham responded, our first real moment of danger. Paul Mullen making his first league start of the season on the right-hand side, feeding it into Palmer, who laid it off beautifully in the D to pick out Cannon, who made a good run in the channel on the right. Cannon got himself into what looked like a good position and then hit the deck, and I think he was lucky not to get a card to dive in, I've got to say. <laughs> you know, he wondered if he'd actually got himself into a position to shoot as well, so a, a shame that. But anyway... The game continued to two and fro till in the 25th minute. Wrexham took the lead. We'd already put one nasty corner in. O'Connor sweeping it in. An in-swinger from the right-hand side just caused problems. This one really did cause problems. Um, O'Connor sweeping it beyond the keeper, Wallacott, who had to dive backwards and make a spectacular save to, to stop the corner from going in directly. It dropped square to the goal. Clueth did ever so well to retrieve the loose ball and flick a nicely weighted volley into the path of Elliot Lee. And he drilled a nice volley in from six yards out. A very satisfying strike. Crowded six-yard box, but he struck it well. And it was nowhere near anybody who could get a block on. And Wrexham had the lead. And we started to gain momentum at that point and look a bit more promising. Uh, it's a poor pass by Flint. Picked up Palmer. Straight after the goal, Palmer driving into the heart of the defence, just overran it slightly. He was surrounded by defenders, to be fair, but he still carried on and the keeper was able to get out and save at his feet. Then there was a opportunity for Anderson at the other end, driving forwards, riding Cannon's tackle and pulling a shot wide from 20 yards, just wide of the right post, before McLean drilled in a ball for Mullen, who was frustrated to put it over the bar. It was a decent opportunity, and he just couldn't keep it down. Then an error allowed Wrexham to pick the ball up again. Cannon sweeping it over to the left-hand side. McLean, with plenty of time in the box, set himself for his usual barnstormer and smashed it over the bar. Uh, angry with himself, and but he had time to take it such if he'd wanted to try and make sure. McLean then losing the ball at left-back. A surge down the flank. And the ball driven in from a, a tight angle, but good save by uh, a Conquo to again deny Swan after his shot from a tightish angle had some bite about it. Swan again then as the half came to a close, running at Clueth. Again, Clueth twisting and turning to keep on his feet and keep his eye on the ball. And just as Swan was going to strike from just inside the box, Clueth lunged and his challenge took the pace off at an easy save for a Conquo. But as you can tell from what I'm describing, it's Crawley making more chances and they really should have equalised in the last minute of the second half. It was snappy passing through the middle by Crawley with Anderson in the centre of it that set up the chance. Katima, who'd been a very slippery customer on the right-hand side, trying to wriggle his way through the defence, made a great run cutting inside. Nobody picked him up and he was completely clear on goal. A Conco came rushing out of the box and lunged for him. Never really got close enough to do that. Luckily, he didn't make contact with him because if he had, it was a red card, undoubtedly. But Katima sidestepped him and lashed it miles over the, the open goal. And it was a proper open goal. McLean was racing back to try and put him off. But when you look at the replay, by the time he's hit it, McLean's still not managed to get between the posts. Katima's, oh, it was horrible. 
he'd get revenge. Don't worry, he'd make up for it within 10 minutes. Uh, the other side of the break, Wrexham with a free kick in a good position. Mullen ripping a good shot just wide of the far post before the 54th minute equaliser by Katima. But it's got to be said, there was a lot of controversy about it. I've looked a lot at this, and my honest opinion is the ref got it right. But uh, I think the law, I don't like the law. I think the rule that he got right is incorrect. All right, so start off with a long ball down the flank. A Crawley player chasing after it. It's borderline whether he's ahead of Clueworth or not. Uh, I've got to be honest, I'm... When I'm commentating that, I didn't really think about whether he was offside. Uh, the flag went up, though. And this is the first point of contention, because a lot of people are saying, Lines put his flag up and the ref ignored him. What I've got to remember is they've all got earpieces in, haven't they? So the referee has overruled the linesman um, and told him so. So it's not just the linesman putting his flag up, being ignored and putting it back down again. There has been communication there. I have an issue with that rule, though, because it's not long. As Parkinson explained it perfectly, it's not long. Clueff, if there's no one running in behind him, can just flick it back to the keeper. Easy. But he has to instead play the ball because there's a player running off behind him. So he, at the stretch, he has to head it back into midfield and the ball is regained by Crawley, who will then go on to score. Um, Parkinson's, uh, but the referee's argument is that the runner is not directly influencing play. Parkinson's argument is, well, of course he is, because Clueth wouldn't have done, made that header if he wasn't influencing Clueth. Obviously, the movement of a, a striker behind a defender influences them. I mean, that's sensible. But here's the bad news. Um, I think Parkinson's right in terms of football, but the laws aren't written by footballers, and according to the letter of law, the referee is quite right. I know this because I had a big argument about this years ago when we lost at home to Braintree and Steve Thomason scored an own goal because he had to put his foot out because there was a player standing offside. Thomason, not wanting to assume he was offside, felt he had to play the ball, and I understand why, and put it past his own goalkeeper. Um, and I said, this is nonsense, and I got inundated with uh, referees <laughs> sending me a message explaining why it wasn't. Uh, wrong and I accept that I accept that the referee in the Crawley game and in that game years ago applied the rule correctly but it's a really stupid rule I, I don't I don't understand how a player playing the ball when they wouldn't play it or they play it differently if that bloke behind them offside wasn't there I don't understand how that makes sense but anyway don't blame the ref and what happened was that the ball was fed in. Katiyama again made that run in from inside. This time he timed it just right. And he slotted the ball home. McConquo had no real chance. It was a nice pass by Darcy to pick him out. So lots of controversy then. Game didn't restart for quite a bit because we were complaining. <laughs> and then briefly Crawley were when they realised they'd all gone back into their own half. And then they noticed that, oh, hang on. The ref's still on the, corner, on the edge of the box talking to the Rexman players. And he did at one point look like he wanted to go and consult with the linesman again. Because he started running down the line of the box towards him and then stopped. So some Crawley players rallying then to have their, their say. It was when they ran straight back that I think that certainly occurred to me that this is going to be a goal. But it was all a bit messy. I'm not quite sure why the referee didn't just say. Because he'd made that overrule. Unless he was wondering whether the Lions want to put his flag up again and he hadn't seen it and he wanted to make sure of that. I didn't quite understand what all the drama was about after the goal from his point of view. But anyway, it stood and ultimately, according to the rules, it was correct. Wrexham responded well to this. We got angry. The crowd got angry. The players got angry. And we started to put pressure on. Lee squaring it to Clueth. He fed the ball on to the edge of the area from a tightish angle. Cannon drove the ball in. It was held well, though. By the keep by the keeper Wallacott. Fletcher came on after 64 minutes for Palmer and started getting involved, although Darcy hit a decent shot across the face that nobody could reach before Wrexham really started pushing on. Halfway through the half, Fletcher getting up after McLean had headed it onto him nicely, popping a really good first time ball back to McLean. He swept the ball into the six yard box and Mullen on the stretch will have been disappointed he couldn't keep his finish down, put it over the bar. Two more changes. Marriott coming on for Mullen. Marriott so unlucky to lose his place in the first time, place that he scored in our last three league matches. And also Reven 
coming on for McLean. And yeah, we continue to pressure, although there was a good moment for Crawley Bragg feeding it down the left, Darcy driving down the flank, then cutting inside and running down the goal line, hitting a shot which took a deflection. Great save by Oconquo, fast hands to get across. He wasn't far out, Darcy, and the deflection moved it considerably. But goodness me, Oconquo was sharp. And then it was Wrexham coming back and putting in a big finish. A quarter of an hour to go, Dobson winning the ball back really well, feeding the ball down the right-hand side, Barnett, driving the ball into the box. It's cleared under the bar, but given straight to Lee. Crawley's defence has dropped too deep. They're all in the six-yard box, and Lee has loads of time on the edge of the area to bring it down, but puts it wide. So uncharacteristic of him. He's so good normally as those type of finishes. But the goal would come. Ten minutes from the end, Dobson, after a corner, have been cleared, doing ever so well, sweeping a lovely ball into the far post, and Clueth rising perfectly, just attacking the far post, but he's on the blind side of his marker. I can't really see where he's coming from. And Clueth gets up and plants it towering downwards. Edda past the keeper and into the net. Wrexham ahead again. Immediately, Cannon, who was looking a little bit tired after his first game after injury, was off. And George Evans was on. But Wrexham continued to create opportunities. Reven sweeping in a good cross. Fletcher heading it just off target. Defended it well to get underneath him and just not allow him to get over the top to nod the ball downwards on target. There was a, a half chance for the substitute Heaven Murphy in the first minutes of added time. The ball fed into him from the right-hand side and he lashed it miles over. It was half a chance and he was being frustrated. And it was Wrexham who were closing the game out well. Reven with a really good interception and run to the edge of the area. The ball laid off to Lee. He tried to rip a curler but couldn't get it on target. And then Jack Marriott, who typically had been buzzing around everywhere with eagerness and especially after being left off, left out the team, nearly got an a absolute barnstormer in the fifth minute of added time, latching onto the ball, driving towards goal and lashing a powerful shot, which drew a really good save to his left by Wallacott to push it away. So, not easy. Crawley were good opposition, but Wrexham get another win and stay top of the league. That's always my sentence to say, isn't it? Looking at the performances, well, well done, Oconquo. He came back from the Birmingham win where he would have been disappointed with the first goal. Made two big saves to keep us uh, in the game. Excellent work by him. The centre-backs, Clueth again, outstanding. Man of the match, surely. I mean, he scored a goal, he set up a goal, and his defending as ever was impeccable. O'Connell, after that early error, was really impressive too, defending the centre of the box well. And O'Connor also had a little, couple of little edgy moments, but generally was solid. That back three continues to be good. On the flanks, Barnett started like a house on fire, tearing down the flanks and really causing problems. He went a bit quiet after that, but he continued to work hard and again to do a solid job defensively. McLean didn't get into the game as much as maybe he would have liked to, but you know, was still a robust presence. And in the centre of the pitch, well, Dobson was good. <laughs> Not awesome, like usual, but he was good. He, he, he moved the ball around well. Lovely ball in for the goal as well. Uh, Lee, again, terrific work ethic. Good quality on a lot of his play. He was a little bit disappointed not to get more than the one goal, to be honest, because he had a couple of presentable chances in the second half. And Cannon back in the team looked good. He looked feisty. He looked a bit tired back when he got subbed. Uh, I think that change was made at the right time, but it was good to see him with another week of training under his belt. He'll be ready for next Saturday fully. And then up front, well, Mullin in his first start, of course, will get a lot of attention. And he, he he had some good moments. You can see he's still feeling his way back to match fitness. He's not had that much of a pre-season, but he had some good threatening moments. That free kick was a good strike, which nearly went in. Palmer, again, was strong and solid, held the ball up very well, and did a good job. And Wrexham... Come out with another win. You can't complain with that. The final score of Wrexham 2, Crawley Town 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.